I'm very lucky that my memory system works on the basis that if anything is painful for my memory, I tend to forget. My memories are suppressed. I think I survive because I have a very patchy memories and I can therefore forget and keep on going. I always knew my parents were Holocaust survivors. We were always given a fairly scant story. I desperately trying to get an understanding sequentially of what happened to my father, not just these pieces of jigsaw puzzles that were laid out in very abstract places. I had always wanted to go back to Poland with my father. It's important for, that we remember, and that we remember that these were people. Each individual that were murdered, each one of them actually had a story. I was six years old when the war broke out. In March 1941, we moved to the ghetto. I developed appendicitis, and there were hospitals in ghetto. And my mother, who was very friendly with a Polish Jewish policeman of the ghetto, was warned that the next morning they're going to take everybody out of the hospital and take them somewhere, which we knew what it meant. And uh, so in the middle of the night, my mother, I still remember, carried me out uh, with a cover. And in the morning, everybody was killed. So we went back to visit some of the places that he was from. This tour guide called Aggie took us around the ghetto. And uh, one of the stories she started to talk about was the date that the hospital was uh, cleared out. And my father said, I know, I was there. And there was silence and she stopped and she could barely continue. That moment, that moment when Aggie stopped and my father stopped and we all stopped, was really very powerful. She'd never met anybody who'd actually survived in her stories. You know, she has a whole tour guide that she does and it's the first time she actually had someone who actually said I was there. But it also put together his memory with history. So the moment we ran out of the ghetto, we obviously had a new identity. They were very lucky that they were able to get papers with a similar name to our name, Haberko. They made arrangements for us to escape from Poland to Hungary to Budapest. We thought that, ah, we are now safe because there is no Jewish problem in Hungary at the time. But a month later, the Germans marched in and the whole thing started all over again. And we were caught as Jews. We were then taken to the local police station, which I still remember. And then we were sent to a camp, a Jewish camp. While we were there, after a very short period of time, the whole of the camp was taken towards Auschwitz. So they were meant to march, and I was on the cart. And that never made sense to me. What do you mean you're marching to Auschwitz? They took trains to Auschwitz. It never made sense. I just figured he must have been marching somewhere or doing something. And he literally went to an exhibition two weeks ago where they talked about the fact that they were running out of trains and they had to start using the trains for the German um, war and so therefore that some of the times they actually were walking or marching rather than catching the train. So even now we're still trying to put together his memories with history. We were kept overnight in the barn as a sort of stopover for the people to go to towards Auschwitz. We took the opportunity to run away. We heard the local police walking through the streets. We hid behind the bushes, stopped breathing until they went past and then we felt safe enough to go and buy the ticket to go back to Budapest, uh, which I bought because I was able to speak some Hungarian. While we were in the train, there was a train going in the opposite direction and I'll never forget it. And our girl sticking from the, from, the, from the train, which obviously aimed to get some help. And I knew what she was going in for. And that was a very, very painful memory. In 
2015, I went on the March of the Living to show the kids not only the concentration camps, but the fact that some people did survive, and I was an example of that. It's a really uplifting experience, and I think it's meant to be, you know, which is 10,000 people say we survived, you know, and we all walk together, you know, united to actually maintain the memory. They were wonderful kids. They were so caring and so emotionally involved in helping me to cope with the situation, so supportive that it's just unbelievable. I think what I found the most moving is how connected they felt to the experience of the March of the Living. You know, what will stick with me for the rest of my life was one of this boy, I think his name is Jacob, who actually did the Kaddish at the Auschwitz train because his grandfather died and no one ever said Kaddish. And we just stood there and it was, it was beyond moving and it still moves me now. And if they meet one of these people who survived, they can understand the six million that didn't. The next generation are still feeling connected to their grandparents and they wanted to feel a part of what is a very profound part of the Jewish life and history. At the age of 82, while I was in the, on the March of the Living, I did not know that they sprung a bar mitzvah on me. And so they called me up and said, well, now read the Torah. So the rabbis were saying, boom. So I said, boom. And so it went on until we read the whole paragraph and I was bar mitzvah boy and I put that film on and everybody was happy and I was amazed <laughs> that at the age of 82, I was a bar mitzvah. You know, so many people feel that memory can be distorted, but when you have a collective memory of so many people telling similar but different stories, you know, that memory becomes a bit more like fact. In Rookwood, Harry Seidler has actually designed something which I think is very simple and yet very profound in what he's trying to capture. The concentration camps, the cobblestones that represent where we came from, the light and the memory that we actually will keep perpetuate forever. And so what better place for us to then actually place something that's going to remember all those people who may not ever have had a place to be buried. Memorials are very important for people, especially for young people, to remember what can happen and to be prepared and to try and fight the prejudices to understand them also gives me a greater insight to understand me and also how I then parent um, and how that continually affects the generations post the Holocaust. <laughs>